Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Yes. You make me feel like I've been locked out of heaven. A mix of today's hits and hard to find favorites. Combined with the most entertaining and intriguing talk anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network at UBNRadio.com. I found my way home across the Grand Mirage. Ever since the party. Ah, applause. Mm, applause. They told you. How nice. Hi. Hello. I'm Alison Arngrim, and this is The Alison Arngrim Show. And on The Alison Arngrim Show, we talk about things that make you feel good, shows that made you feel good, the movies that made you feel good, and people who are doing amazing things. And, well, as you know, I was on a show that made a lot of people feel good. Some of you know me as Nellie Olson from Little House on the Prairie. So here on The Alison Arngrim Show tonight, yes, another show that you all loved. If you love Little House, you probably watch The Waltons, too. And we have the amazing, because she's not just from the Waltons, the amazing Judy Norton, who's an actress, author, director, producer, singer, and skydiver. And you also did know her as Mary Ellen on the Waltons, Judy Norton. How are you? I'm fine. Wow, here we are. You're on my show. It is new. You look fabulous. Thank you. You look great. You're so marvelous. You do so much. And yes, and everyone still loves you. They love you because, yes, you were Mary Ellen and we love you. But you do everything. <laughs> you do everything now. Okay. I think. Okay, first of all, I have to. <laughs> skydiving, really? Um, I, haven't, I haven't done it since I was about four months pregnant. And my son is now 22, so it's been a while. Okay, you did it, but you did it. I, I did. have not done yes. it. I've done the hang gliding thing. I have not done the skydiving thing. I think I could do the flying, not the falling part. I was chicken. Well, I did it for about 10 years. Wow. I have about 700 jumps, including <gasps> two world records. And, yeah, it was uh, kind of my weekend activity for years and years. And, and yeah. You say world, world record for skydiving. Is that like as in height? No, it was largest formation. Oh. So one was um, all women, 60 women, and the other one was co-ed, and that was 120. Out of I did not know that was even giant, a possible thing. Oh, yeah, and they, they've <laughs> since been broken, so I have no idea what the record is now. Wow. But yeah, yeah, we, um, that one we jumped out of a big uh, military C-130 aircraft. Yeah, like little guppies coming out of the back of the plane forever. And I was kind of like one of the first waves that came out, and I just f was out there in the air just watching wave after wave after wave of all these people You're dropping out of exploding, you know, brave, out of this plane. Way, yeah, so. I wouldn't know. You're much braver. <laughs> I would be terrified. Well, it, it, I've done a lot of things for jobs, you know, mm -hmm. and initially um, I was approached by Circus of the Stars. That's right. You're very you're you're an athletic person. You're I, um, sporty. I yes, I know you're not sporty. You're sporty. Well, I was a tomboy on the Waltons, yes. and it was typecasting. So you know, I well, I grew up with a mix of dance and mm -hmm. sports, and which is a good kind of combination because it you know it's a good kind of coordination. And I figured the things I can't be good at, I'll try and look good doing. <laughs> 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 so. Um, yeah, so I had done a number of the celebrity sporting things like Battle of the Network Stars and, you know, celebrity Battle of the, the Sexes. You did the circus one? So I did circus. Because you've done, you've done trapeze stuff. Yes. So the first time they contacted me, um, I was out in Texas, and I was, doing, I was doing a production of Annie Get Your Gun. And I got a call right towards the end. I'd just come back to L.A., and I always go through this, like, transition when I come back from out of town doing a show where it's like, I wonder if I'll ever work again, and, you know, and like it's like reentry. You've lived in this little sort of cocoon, and you have no idea what's going on in the outside world for a period of time because it's so intense. And and I came back, and I was like, do to do to do, twiddling my thumbs. And my press agent called and said, um, we've we've been contacted by Circus of the Stars, and they're looking for somebody to do a stunt that involves a wing walk and a skydive. Yeah. And somebody had had you know pulled out from the stunt for whatever reason because and it involved walking on a wing at a skydive <laughs> maybe i don't know thought. so they're like well they have a, they have offers out there they've put a number of calls out and the first person who says yes 
uh, we'll do it. And I said, well, go ahead and tell him yes. And I thought, and then I'll think about it after. <laughs> so I um, I was a little concerned because, you know, playing tennis and all kinds of things, I, you know, rolled ankles and stuff like that. And I went, you know, my ankles aren't super strong, you know, at this point. I went, you know, I could maybe break an ankle or something like that. Well, I got to the day where, and it was like eight hours of training mm-hmm. in, in, you know, like in a room, like, you know, in about... I don't know, four or five hours into it when they're talking about every kind of malfunction you can have with a parachute and every, every like emergency thing you might have to do. Because the, the training method I went through is called accelerated free fall, where you do not, you, I've never done a static line jump. Uh, so my very first jump was like 13,000 feet yeah. with um, two highly trained instructors, and each one had a hold of you know, me. So they were, you know, making sure nothing, I didn't go anywhere. And they stay with you until you open your parachute, and that literally takes you out of their hands, and then you're under a parachute. So about five hours into eight hours of ground training, I said, you know, in all these emergency procedures, I suddenly went, break an ankle. I could die doing this. Yeah, what are you thinking? That was the first time <laughs> that had ever crossed my mind. I'm like, what am I, why, 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 you know? And it was, the, and and then it got to the end of the day, and, and weather was coming in. They said, "Okay, well, we'll make the jump tomorrow." And I was like, "Oh, good!" So all night, I'm like, "Oh, can I do that?" Like, How do you well, sleep with that? No, 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 you don't. And I went, "Well, it's not like they're going to push me out if I change my <laughs> mind." But at that point, it's like my ego wouldn't let me, you know, not do it. And, so the next day we go up there, and I'm thinking we've been doing all this stuff where we're practicing. We're in a Cessna, and we like we step off the the little the little platform over the little wheel and you step away from the ground and you kind of practice like you're in the air what you're going to do so someone else went up in the plane you know jean paul or whatever and they're like we're going to make two we're going to circle over the drop zone twice the first time we're going to let john luke or whatever his name is go out and you can you know it's like you want to watch him so i scoot over towards the door to watch him go and he kind of waves and then he is gone and I'm like, I thought he'd be out there and I could wave at him. And, you know, Whoosh, no, he is like gone. And I was like, again, what was I thinking? I was just so clueless. So then I was like, oh, my goodness. Oh, what have I gotten into? So we're circling around again. And, you know, and the first time was like that nasty drop on a roller coaster yeah. where your, your stomach ends up someplace around, you know, your nose. Why I have not done it yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, but after that, I never had that experience again. I, you know. Um, and it's quite something. So I went through about 40 wow. jumps, training jumps to, you know, prepare for the stunt, which was really about the wing walking more than anything else. The, the wing walking I practiced, I think, twice. I was like, I had to climb up onto the top wing of an, of a biplane from the front seat and get strapped yeah. into a harness. And then the pilot flew aerobatics with me, you know, strapped in. And then it was supposed to like tip over and I was supposed to, oh fall off the plane so the only reason i needed to be able to skydive was so that i could land safely so from this pretend fall off the plane falling off the plane and we went out and we were supposed to shoot it in las vegas as they did with circus of the mm-hmm. stars and um the first day we had really high winds which was is not safe for skydiving and so we shot all of the um the plane to plane wing walk stuff and then the next day they still couldn't do it because we still had bad weather. And they said, well, we'll shoot it back in, in L.A., out in Hemet, where I'd originally trained. And the day we rescheduled that, it rained. So they said, we're out of time <laughs> to make deadline. You know, So they said, well, we will tease it this episode, and then we will finish it in the next episode, like <gasps> next year or next season or whatever. And the next season, for some reason, they said, we're not going to do that stunt. So wait, this, they, 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 they chickened out. So we never finished the <gasps> stunt, and that's when they asked me. They gave me a choice of doing um, tightrope or flying trapeze. And being afraid of heights, I went, I'll do flying trapeze. Because I mean, that, you, you, but I, you're still up in the air. Yeah, well, yes, hello. Okay. We've, we've established <sighs> yes. that sometimes my thought process <laughs> is not all that it should be. You know, my cognitive reasoning just falls a little short. So... Anyway, so yes, I spent 12 weeks training for flying trapeze. I, I never got on Dancing with the Stars. Uh, I didn't do Dancing. I haven't done the. I didn't do Circus of the Stars. I haven't done Dancing with the Stars. I haven't done. I didn't do the the old uh, uh, Battle of the Network Stars because I can trip over the pattern in a carpet, yeah. and generally was seen as far too clumsy. And even then, my own family and management said, "No, this is a bad idea because you will fall down and you will hurt yourself because you are a complete klutzoid." Um, 
being on a television series, much like leaping out of a plane, we wonder what we've gotten ourselves into. Yes. You were so young, and the Waltons wound up being a mega hit, much like the whole thing with like all of us on Little House. We had no idea if you said you know, 45 years ago, hey, do you know the show's going to still be watching it 40 years from now in 140 countries, and people are going to come up to speaking other languages and talking about it. They've seen every episode. What? Never in a billion, billion years right. did we think this is what was going to happen. What was that like for you with the phenomenon that became that, that the Waltons became? Well, I'm sure very much like like with your show and your cast, um, because we were a single camera shoot, and it was like you know a few months minimally be- from the time we filmed it until it was on the air. Right. We there was no live audience or anything like that, so we were disconnected from our our fan base. You know, I I got a ton of fan mail, but. You know, I, I, that's a little different than actually coming in contact with people. It's, it's not like now with the Internet where you tell us right away. We have no, we have yes, no good, idea. The good, the bad, and the ugly. We would shoot all of these episodes and go home and go to bed and have yeah. no idea. And then, like, months later, find out what yeah. people thought about it. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so we started getting the sense that people liked the show. And, um, and but I don't know about your show, but, like, the Waltons did not create hysteria in our fans. You know, very rarely did people, like, go to completely gaga and squeal and, you know, try and, you know, take pieces of your clothing or your hair. You know, people were usually Thank pretty, heavens. Yes, <laughs> were usually pretty, um, uh, pretty calm. And, you know, they might be excited, but they were, you know. We, we've said that with our little husband, like, even with our nutty fans now. We have a few, you know, occasionally we'll get kooky people at an event. But the worst we've ever had is so mild compared to what I hear yeah. from other shows. Yeah. Generally, I've said 99.9% of Little House fans are very nice yes. people that we don't really have to worry about them getting yeah. that weird and on most, us. mostly normal, but, you know, <laughs> I think that's, you know, that's true with any show. you got your, you know, slightly and kooky people. neither of our shows were, were the pop culture thing. Like, neither of us were, like, big in L.A. and New York. It was the right. rest of the world. L.A. Yeah. and New York were kind of going, yeah, what? Right. what? Yes. Who? You're on what? You're not on Charlie's Angels. What? Right. What? But everybody at school who was making fun else. of me mm-hmm. certainly seemed to know an awful lot about this show. They were making fun of me. Don't about you it. love that? Oh, no, yeah. I never watched that show. You know, the episode with the raccoon when the thing. And they, like, know the details oh, yeah. of episodes after they oh, yeah. swore yeah. they never oh, saw hello, it. Yeah. John Boy. Good night, John Boy. Mm-hmm. You know, in the hallways at school. I'm like, ah, oh, never watched that show, huh? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And of course, they made fun of you. And now they all brag to everyone they know that they went to school with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's a bizarre yeah, phenomenon, and, and the whole '70s thing, and then yeah. you wind up doing all the other the weird shows and the yeah. whole quasi teen idol. Like I said, we weren't we weren't the proper t- Tiger Beat teen idols because yeah. we were on these shows, but yeah. we still had this weird teenage fame. Yeah, yeah, and I did you know I did make those magazines now and then and and stuff like that, and um, you know, so it was it was an it was an interesting sort of childhood, you know, or growing up. I mean, I was in my teens through through all of it. Um, and then into my 20s. and But, you know, I mean, it's really been since the show went off the air and now with the reunions that we do and there's a museum in Virginia, Walton Museum in the hometown where Or Hamner, who created the show, where he grew up, um, there's a museum. And and so when people come out there, I mean, now the, the stories I hear from people and what the show meant to them, mm-hmm. I mean, they're so heartwarming. I mean, they're so touching. And, you know, people that like, you know, coming across people said oh you know I was going through chemotherapy and I would watch your show when I couldn't do anything else and that would just like get me through the worst of you know after chemo and I I mean stories and people said I didn't you know my my childhood was horrible and I watched your show so that I would have some sense of what a family should be and you know some of it just breaks my heart you know we get we get so much of this with Little House we're hearing more from people now than we did when it was on and because it's so, the, the reruns where it's on multiple times a day, I, we're meeting more people now that are into it than then. And yeah, people talk about their entire life. Oh, I used to watch it with my grandmother, blah, blah, and this is how I remember her. And yeah, the number of people who swear that the show saved their lives. Yeah. This, is, this is the kind of shows we were on. Yeah, I know. It's, it's <laughs> I mean, it, in some ways I'm glad I didn't, I mean, we always felt a responsibility to the mm-hmm. show because we felt that what it had to say and what it represented was really important. And we kind of knew that we were, role models in a sense and so we honor we tried to honor that to you know the best of our ability um and you know we kind of have a little uh sort of um we have a pact you know where we kind of protect mm-hmm. we're very protective of the show and the cast and everything like that and um so it you know we were 
our cast, I mean, you know most of our cast. I mean, we are a family. The, the <laughs> Walton people and the Prairie people do hang out together. Yes, yes. yes. We yes. have a lot of and crossover. And sometimes we get called by each other. I, I'm always getting the, oh, yeah, were you the one that went blind? You know? <gasps> do you get that? <laughs> oh, all the time. Yes, yes. <laughs> I've, I've, we've, I've had people say, is your the show with the good night, John Boy? I'm like, no, it's the other yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we they, people do confuse the two shows because you know mountains and prairies, and, Mount, you know, from the mountain and, to the prairie. Yeah, the you know, it's, yeah. It's, so. it's, it's it's so bizarre, but yeah, it's it's a weird way to grow up. And like I said, not not everyone, even the population of people like who were on TV shows in the seventies. But then, if you're on the Waltons or Little House, it's a completely different experience, even yeah. from that. Yeah, it's and then now, thing. 40 to 45 years right? later, what and that happened? it's still on all over the world and every day. And, yeah, I mean, what's exciting is that new generations are getting to know these mm-hmm. shows, that, you know, people will come and say, oh, yeah, you know, my, you know, mom grew up watching you, and now, you know, she she introduced us to the show, right. or, or now we're in the third generation of, you know, now I'm, you know, my daughter is introducing her kids to it. And, you know, I mean, I, I just... You know, I hope it, I hope it lasts forever. <laughs> right, I'm like, don't stop. Yeah, right. <laughs> just keep it going. And you've you know, obviously parlayed this very well. I mean, when I talk about the writer and director, I mean both film and on stage. You've directed both stage on film. I mean, the list of shows and musicals, and and we were just chatting with someone here about playing Dolly and Hello Dolly for heaven's sake. Yeah, yeah, it's a show I've done four or five times four now, five times. and. Which is which is bizarre to me because of all the shows that I might do a lot, I'd be more inclined to think it would have been like Annie Get Your Gun, who's right? Like Annie the Get Tom Your Gun. Boy, I go, but, you oh, know. right, you would do that all the time. No, yeah, but Dolly, Hello, I'm Dolly. Kinda like you know. <laughs> okay, all right, you know. Sometimes it's yeah. I mean, it, it's a. I mean, it's a great show, you know, and and it's a lot of fun, you know. But it's not necessarily a character that I would have thought that you know i would i would necessarily be doing <laughs> over and over you know well yeah we don't know what's going to hit but then of course i mean it's great you actually can sing see i can't sing i don't run around doing musicals because i can't sing but you not only can sing but as in musicals you also are a, a, a fabulous singer i've been to your show you have a cd well how many cds do you have out now? i have a couple you have a couple albums yeah out. yeah so um which are available if people are interested yes do tell us Via, where can they get them where well, can they get them they can get them through yes. my website um, JudyNorton.com. That's um, easy. Yes. JudyNorton.com. Yeah, you can order through there, and those are hard copies, and I personally sign those. Yes, that's what we like. We like yes. those. Yes. Or mm-hmm. if you are of the digital age and you prefer to just download your music, you can go to iTunes and search for it there, and you will find it there. Or Amazon, yeah. So that's first of many plugs that no doubt we will do during the course yeah, of absolutely. our Absolutely. Little... You can plug away <laughs> on this show. That is not a problem. I plug myself. We plug everybody. It's good. But yeah, no, I I just your voice is fantastic, and when I've seen you live, it's just it's Thank it's you. wonderful. It's really wonderful. I really as a, as a kid, one of the first things I did was like musical review, and mm-hmm. then um, started in children's theater, and um, and then I think I was about sixteen when I found out that I really was did not particularly have good pitch and really? had a hard time carrying a tune, and that just devastated me because I so wanted to do musicals. So I marched myself into a voice teacher and spent many, many, many hours and years, you know, training my little buns off so that I could do musical theater because it was something that I loved. And I am shocked because I thought it came naturally because you're so fabulous. Well, thank you. Thank you. So it does go to show that many things, you know, can be can be learned. Well, so. and then you became a director on yes. top of everything else. Now, you directed both film and stage. Yeah. Um, well, I started initially with the writing and directing mm-hmm. with a the theater company up in Canada. And I spent eight years with You're that the company. You're the director of, like, two different yeah. companies up there. I mean, you, you yeah. did everything. Yeah. So we were responsible for writing and directing five original shows a year. So that's kind of where I got my, you know, my feet wet, really hands-on writing and directing and did like 40 shows for that company and then started working for a company down in Texas. And then, you know, that kind of branched into an opportunity to, um, I've had three films produced um, and then a TV series that I did some writing and directing for up in Canada. And so, it, you know, it, it just kind of kept spiraling in, in, in a wonderful way. And I found that Fortunately, I'm like you. I mean, we had fabulous mentors in, mm-hmm. you know, in the scripts that we got to portray. You know, some Emmy Award winning, you know, writers and directors did those shows. And so I got, you know, for nine years, I got to read great scripts, 
you know, so I it was really not until after the Waltons that I started going, oh, not every script is good. Oh, isn't that a shock when it that happened? Is. Yes. 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 So when we all got off Little House and went, not everyone knows how to direct. Not everyone can write a script. Oh, look. Yes, oh, yes. no. All shows aren't fun to be on. Yikes. No. Not all <laughs> casts get along. Wow. Yeah. Um, we were so, spoiled. Yeah. We were all spoiled. Weren't it? So, I, you know, I just kind of, there's a lot of stuff that I just soaked in from being around it. And, and then with theater, you know, you get to see something's working or it's not working and you can fix it in rehearsal or you know, even fix it during the run if you have to. So that was great for a training ground. And then, you know, with the, the then with the film and television, you know, I kind of already, you know, sort of had had my feet wet, and it, that made it a lot easier when I when I went into that arena. So, and then your your current film, which has two titles, it has two titles. We have to clear <laughs> that up for everyone. I like the first title. Um, well, I wanted something um, that was a little provocative, so it's a, the original title is Inclusion Criteria, and it can, you, if you search for Inclusion Criteria, you will still find it, um, but um, we found that that was confusing to some people. They couldn't remember the name, and they weren't sure what it was about. It's a psychological thriller, um, and so we've ended up retitling it, so right now it's kind of a bit of an also known as, and its new title is Nowhere to Hide, and that is just starting to come out and be... Um, available also um, on DVD and streaming. Um, and so, I mean, no one. I mean, I see where that works because it does sound yeah. scary and exciting. And the yes. movie is the movie scared the crap out of me. <laughs> I saw this movie, the big screen screening, scared me out of my wits. It was frightening. And you are in this. You write it. You direct. You did everything on this. You I did not it. direct this. Not I was, direct, I was it. one of the producers. Um, the director Josh Hodgins. Um, a couple of wow, a couple of years good. ago, two three years ago. We were having lunch, and, and something came up about psychological thrillers. And I said, well, I have this idea, and I kind of floated it by him. And he goes, oh, I love that. He goes, if you ever decide to write that, I would love to be a part of that. So fast forward about a year, and I went, you know, Josh, I really think I'm going to write that. And he's like, great. Why don't you write it, you star in it, and I'll direct it. And I went, oh, because I hadn't necessarily sure. thought <laughs> of it as a vehicle for myself. But, you know, I hadn't written it yet, so it's like, well, I can make it whatever I want. Um, and it... Uh, I mean, it basically, uh, it follows my character, Tara Malone, who's kind of, who, who's an artist, a painter, and a kind of a loner, and um, she starts, odd things start happening in her life. You know, mysterious, the furniture is moved, clothing is moved, things are disappearing, and she isn't sure if she's being stalked, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. is a really frightening proposition, but the other thing that's equally terrifying to her is she's really afraid she is literally going crazy because her mother did. And so she's afraid that, you know, genetically that maybe it's caught up with her and she doesn't know if she's doing these things and just doesn't remember. It's so. it's very scary. I, I remember there was that film um, Memento about the guy who said, you have to remember each day. It just it reminded me of that. Mm -hmm. It reminded me of so many thrillers I'd seen. And it was just it it was very scary because at first it is just kind of, well, this is happening in her head. And then other things are, this is not happening in her head. Something is going yeah, on. Something very sure. disturbing is taking place yeah. here. And how much of this is in her head and how much is happening. Yeah. And then if it's happening, who's doing it? Yeah. And there are a number of potential suspects, a number of somewhat uh, suspicious characters who are There was in a her lot life. of uh, like yeah. plot twists because just when you think, okay, well, okay, I, you find yourself doing that thing in your home. I know who it is. It's, it's her. It's her. It's that one. No, it's him. And it's just, no, it kept, it kept jumping around. And talk about I find it made, the movie made me paranoid. It made me because it makes you like, okay, I'm never trusting anyone uh, again. I have no idea if I could trust any of these people. I'm now not going to sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it, it, we had a, we had a great time creating it, and the team that I got to work with was amazing. And you know, it was it was one of those like in the trenches, man. Let's just we did it. It's a small independent film, so. We knocked it out in a short period of time with a small crew, and and it was just, you know, everybody put their heart and soul into it, and that just was the best. Everybody was there because they wanted to be, and um, so we're, we're really proud of the film, and, and we actually, um, it's going to be at the Indie Gathering yes, Film plug, Festival. Plug. Yes, um, next month in um, Cleveland, Ohio, we won mm -hmm. second place Ooh. in the suspense thriller um, category. So that that's pretty exciting, and um, it's also we don't know we've been accepted into the Louisville, Kentucky Film Festival in October. Oh, very good. 
Um, and I don't, their, their sort of voting isn't finished in terms of, you know, their awards and stuff, but we've been accepted to that film festival. So, you know, we're just, we're just working on getting the film out there and it is available now. I mean, people can order, can get the DVD. You can order the DVD. Yes, plug now it in. you Where can also, if, now, if you also, want to wait, personally there's more. sign. <laughs> For nineteen ninety nine. Yes, if you want it personally autographed by me to you, um, you can also order that through my website, judynorton.com. And it is a little bit more because I do have to sign and send it to you personally. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if that doesn't matter to you, you can order it through most retailers online like you know, Walmart or Amazon or Best Buy, Barnes and Noble, most of those DVD retailers, you can order it uh, under either inclusion criteria mm-hmm. or nowhere to hide. Check both and you might be able to get it under e- with under either one. Um, and if you want to just stream it, it's on Amazon and it's also on iTunes for just if you want like a just to stream it. It's I, I, I highly recommend it. No, I mean, I really do. I did I mean, I said not just going, oh, your, your film's great. But no, no, actually, I was, I was Thank scared you. out of my wits. <laughs> and I, I don't know. I don't really think of the other stuff you've done. I'm not isn't so much scary. You mm. don't you really have a written that many scary things generally. <laughs> Not usually, um, because I started writing really musical comedies. You right. know, so <laughs> it's kind of definitely. If they jump. were scary, it was it was not good news. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad, it was scary. No, no, we haven't done any of that. I mean, we've had some with some, you know, like some spooky moments, but um, not so much. That hasn't been, you know, what I did. But then, you know, uh, the TV series I wrote, Bluff, the, it's a cop drama mm-hmm. in Canada, you know, was... It was a cop drama, you know, kind of a cop soap, you know. So there was some, you know, some darker stuff in that. It was kind of edgy, and um, and I've with a with um, someone else. I've had a number of different people I've written with, you know, who've had vehicles that you know they've asked me to do a rewrite on or whatever. So I've done a couple of like crime drama things or mystery sci-fi things, you know. Um, my for, my other two films that um, hopefully will be out either this year or next year. Are both kind of family films. Oh, yeah. Um, the first the first one that I wrote is actually has isn't out yet, but um, it's like a family um, family film. Three generations of a music family, musical family. Oh, nice. Um, and uh, Billy Zane and Allison Eastwood star in that. And um, I mean, it's one of those sort of a lot of familiar faces like um, uh, Barry Corbin, William Shockley. I have a cameo in it. Um, you know, so there's a number of people that you know you will you will recognize in that film and it's um you know a woman whose father was a record producer and you know but never seemed to have time for her and now her daughter you know she and she married then a one of his protégés you know Billy Zane plays this you know country western star and she wants nothing to do with it any of it more she feels like it you know it ruined her childhood her dad was never there for her and her husband, you know, put his career ahead of the family, and now she's got a 16-year-old daughter who wants to be a singer-songwriter. Of course she does. Of course she does. Pop star. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, she's surrounded from all sides. She is. She is. But then, you know, she really kind of has to come to terms with with all of it, um, and um, and it really is about you know the things that you sometimes have to let go of in order to heal, mm-hmm. you know, and the way families, you know, just need to accept and forgive and you know and find a way to to go forward so um it's a really sweet film and um called finding harmony and hopefully it'll be out finding harmony soon cool. um yeah and the other one's uh takes place at a water park okay so we have total paranoia <laughs> that people are in your house a happy forgiving loving family dealing with the music industry and then we go to a water park we do this we is all do. coming yes. out of your same brain that's this is what gets me about you yeah so okay so the water park what happens yeah. in the water park it's, it's called another day in paradise and um that's also a family thing it's you know a father with twin daughters his wife died a year ago and um, so it's it's the three of them now trying to figure out how to go forward. And the, fa- the it's the family water park. And they're struggling a bit, you know, um, just trying to figure out how to go forward because it was really um, the mom who was the glue of the family. And so, you know, trying to trying to work that out over the course of the summer. But, you know, it, it's it's teen fun, you know, cute lifeguards and and um, 
silly fun, you know, splashing in the water and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, and, and kind of in the in the vein of those kind of fun summer movies that, you know, Disney always did. And, you know, and I hearken back to the ones like the Gidget movies of my childhood and, um, you know, just stuff like that. I did that. a movie on a houseboat when I was 10. Yes, it was that. <laughs> so, now, what's the water park one called? Another Day in Paradise. Another Day in Paradise. So after you watch Inclusion Criteria and you can't sleep, yes. you can watch this. Go, ah, yeah. happy people yeah. in a water right. park with so, lifeguards. Yes, yeah. they'll feel so better. So those hopefully will be out uh, maybe maybe this year, maybe later this year. So oh, Very cool. Now, do you direct these or you just write these? Those, uh, those were both ones I wrote. Mm-hmm. And I have roles in, in, in both of them. So acting and, and writing. and Yeah. Now, it's interesting because you said you uh, you had to train to, to learn to jump out of planes. Mm-hmm. You were initially just going to do the thing in the walk, and that didn't work out. And that you didn't actually just fall out singing. You actually had to learn singing. So how did you become a writer and a director? Um, mm-hmm. It was really kind of hands-on, you know. Mm-hmm. It was working with that theater company in Canada. Um, and I co-wrote, you know, because uh, I uh, my partner and I... Um, we were the artistic directors, so we co-wrote and we, you know, and and co-directed, you know. I mean, mostly he he did most of the directing. We kind of split the writing, and you know, but I sort of apprenticed under under him as a director, and and they were it, it was musical, so I worked with the music director a lot, and you know, and and small production team, so I had learned a lot of it, and so really it was like, you know, writing stuff and then seeing it up on the stage and going, I, I'll never forget because I thought I wasn't sure that. I've always loved acting, and that was, you know, what I did from the time I was a small child. I thought, oh, I don't know if I would, if I would like just sitting in the audience, you know, whether I'd be like, oh, I want to be on the stage. And I'll just, I'll never forget the first night of this this show that the first show I wrote. Um, it was a, it was another kind of country western thing, a silly thing in a saloon, you know, <laughs> and um, yeah, um, and. I sat in the audience, and you know, when people were laughing, it was like, oh, "They're laughing! I wrote that." And they're <laughs> laughing. Oh, look! And I was just, I was, I was like a little kid, you know, going, "Oh, oh, they, oh, they like it. Oh, oh, they're laughing. Oh, this, oh, thank goodness, you know." <laughs> so, but then I could see throughout the rehearsal process what was working, what wasn't, and you know, and, and stage is very, you, know, you really have to visually put pictures together, and and so, um, so I learned. All of that, you know, like hands-on doing. Plus, I'd done a ton of stage from the time I was in a children's, re- not a children's. I was in a repertory company. Yeah, this was something you knew yeah. something about. This yeah, is, yeah, I'd been in doing that. stage for you know since I was a kid, and then with was with an adult repertory company. I was doing kid in the company for a couple of years. I only reason I left the company was because I started doing the Waltons, and I couldn't do both. I just you mm-hmm. know time wise couldn't couldn't hack it. Um, so yeah, so going back to that, it, I mean, it was just really trial and error you know it's like oh the audience didn't care for that that's kind of you know not oh that needs to be tightened you know and the great thing is you can go back in and you can do it and you can mess with it and then you can see did that work better so by the time I started writing for you know film or television you know I had a better sense of what audiences like I mean it was the same thing with singing you know where doing concert work where you know I, I sort of I kind of watched flow and stuff like that, and then some of the first things I put together would be like, you know, I go, oh, okay, it got a little too slow before. I need to pick it up here. But that was just a sense of timing also from doing But that's incredible because n- people aren't born with that sense of timing, that you have that, that it's one thing to say, okay, I have this great idea. Everybody has an idea. But you actually write it, actually make it into a play that, that can be performed, to actually something that works, and then – have that kind of instinct to go, oh, okay, that didn't work, that worked, and change it. That mm-hmm. That's not something everyone can do. Well, thank you. I, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's odd because when you do things, you don't necessarily stop to think about whether it's easy or hard for other people. I mean, the things that I can do, I always assume are easy and that I want to be able to do the things that someone else can do that I can't do. I'm like, oh, well, what I do is easy. What they're doing is hard. Right, you that's know? what people go, oh, well, how'd you write your book? I, I wrote it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, well, you, you put words on paper. And yeah, keep, I mean, and for keep me going. to write a book, uh-uh, uh-uh. Right? I mean, See, okay. And I would be terrified yeah. to write a movie. I would think yeah. that was so hard. Yeah. See, I mean, that's too many words in a book. It's too many, <laughs> it's Dialogue, too many words. Dialogue, I can do. My, You know, it's like, I, I like the short little stage direct. You know, it's like, okay, it doesn't I have to worry if it's if it's a pretty descriptive thing. It's like, who cares? They're going to shoot the thing. You know? <laughs> it's like, I always go, you know, I don't want to do the director's job or the set director's job. You know, it's like... <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm not going to describe every little thing. I'll Except when you're the director. Yeah. And then I don't have to because if I'm, if I'm writing something I know I'm going to direct, it's even more shorthand. Because I'm like, I know what's in my head, so I don't have to describe it. Oh, so then it. when you go, right, because when you go to shoot it, okay, I didn't tell you yeah. this is the yeah. time in the script, but now yeah. it's, it's all there. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the same thing with the, with the stage productions. If I'm, you know, most of the stage productions I've uh, that I have written, I've also directed. So in that case, you know, I can be right there with the actors and go, okay, well, this is what I meant by that. You know, this is why I didn't describe exactly what that was about, because this is what this is. But it's it's a fascinating thing, like directing. I mean, I've also taught acting. I worked mm-hmm. with a with a you know I I taught for a film school up in, when I lived in Canada, as well, and and um, so that was also helpful to me in directing and writing. You know, to kind of see what it, you know what actors you know what tools I had that I could share with actors and what it took to then guide them into performance. And I very much do agree with what a lot of directors say, which is that ninety percent of directing is casting. Not right. You know, I mean, I, I write something and then I really rely on the actors to bring other layers to it that didn't occur to me, you know, and I don't, that's why I like to kind of see what people bring to it before I tell them what something's about. You know, it's like they may, they may find an angle on that character that never occurred to me that is far more brilliant than what I had in my mind, you know, so, and I, I always hope that will be the case. And um, like on stage, you know, like I'll kind of, I always give the actors like some freedom. I'll go, okay, good, look, you know, let's start, you know, with this scene. All right, everybody, just just feel it out. See what you feel <laughs> like you're doing. Within probably, a, you know, half a page to a page, actors that may have started, it's like a you enter there, you enter there, you know, within about at least minimally a page, they have formed themselves into a line. Why do we do that? Yeah. I know all the shows have been in an eventually. Why are you all standing yeah. in a line? Could you could you break that yeah. up? I know I'm giving you blocking, but yeah. you're standing in a freaking line. What yeah. what, what what is that well, compulsion? Because I think actors <laughs> don't want to upstage themselves, right? And so everybody ends up kind of coming down to you know so well, because nobody he? will turn around and look at you because they're <laughs> you know so they come down so that you know so I always it's like about the time they get to the line it's like okay okay good so we were good up until like about four lines ago good now <laughs> <laughs> now let's not do that you know and and um, you know and then you, and then you have to get creative when you want to go okay I need some movement here and let's take you over there it's like well why am I going over there I don't feel like I'd go over there mm-hmm. so you have to give them something plausible so some <laughs> motivation is it? but I mean it just boy this makes me want to work with you as a director uh, but yeah because you turn you turn the actors loose for a while mm-hmm. and then you just say okay but it's a show and we're charging people money and they have to see us so could you you know <laughs> get them to actually be yeah and sometimes you, they just and sometimes they, it's like you just have to trust me because I I know it feels awkward, but it looks really good from out here, you know, so, you know, make it work. <laughs> you see, obviously you're comfortable with this because the massive experience in theater, in children's theater, growing up even before the Waltons were on stage. And, and then, as you said, this, this Canadian theater experience, I mean, that's how my parents got started. They ran a theater in Canada. Ah, so there well. you go. So you had that, that backup. But the obvious question, nowadays everyone's talking about women directors and mm-hmm. women writers and trying to get more female directors and more female writers in film. You've had absolutely no problem with this. You seem to be cranking out movies, starring in them, directing them, writing them. And and it doesn't seem to be, at least on the surface, an issue of this is difficult because you are female. Um, no, but it, it, it's still, I struggle with the, you know, like getting the stuff out there, you know, like everybody does. If you have great ideas, it still doesn't mean that the people that you go talk to that, you know, if you need financing or you mm-hmm. need distribution or whatever, you still hit up against the boys club, you know, at times. You know, certainly I've, I've run into a lot of that. It's like, oh, you know, that's very nice. I'm so glad, you know, aren't you cute? You know, and so, I mean, I think I think it. you know, it, we still have a long way to go. But, um, you know, I mean, it was great when I've worked on a number of projects where there were a lot of women Mm -hmm. and um, had people comment about how they felt the atmosphere was kinder. Mm -hmm. I mean, women get a bad bad reputation for being catty and really, you know, and certainly that can happen, but it's not necessarily the I case. I hear that a lot, a lot when there's a female director on the set. They say the whole atmosphere is different, and yeah. people talk about people that all the time. People are kinder, it's it. gentler. I mean, it's like there was no yelling or screaming on, you know, on my sets or, you know, whatever. It's just like, okay, you know, and and then, I mean, but to me, it's always about the team you pull together, you know. Um, 
and I've been fortunate to work with some really good people. And and when I when there have been people that I didn't think were so great, I don't work with them again. <laughs> That's good team. Convenient, yes, right? Yeah, so, you know. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, this will not be happening again. Thank <laughs> you very much. You know, <laughs> but you've been able to do what you want. And I haven't seen. It's not like you're doing specifically women's project. I mean, we talk no. about the kind of lifetime hallmark sort of mm-hmm. type of movie, and absolutely, you make that type of thing. But as you said, I mean, as you said, you just did well. Well, there's the family with the music industry and then there's the water park and then there's the terrifying thriller and you're not placing any of these restrictions on yourself as to what you can and cannot do yeah um yeah i mean i, I agree I, I there are things that like if somebody came to me with you know certain types of you know if they wanted a, a you know like a procedural courtroom thing i'd probably be like what you know <laughs> Uh, but then you did you the know. cop show, so yeah, 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 you know. But I tend to fudge him, and I go, you know what? Let's do, let's do, like even the cop drama. Yeah, you know, I mean, yes. Then you have to get advisors and stuff like that. But then you know, I start, I will start moving it into task force or you know, <laughs> <laughs> private sector or you know things like that. That that gives you freedom where you don't have to know every rule. But you know, I try to gather my resources that I can use for um, for those kinds of. Um, hey, what's the deal with blah, blah, you know? Um, so there's things that I, I would certainly be less comfortable writing and, you know, might go, oh, I don't know about that. Um, but it's kind of, you know, it's kind of fun to, you know, to stretch and, you know, in each one of these things, I just feel like it's a new opportunity to stretch and challenge myself. And, you know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, you know? I mean, if I'm writing, you know, I mean, I always kind of say to people, if I write something, it's like, look, if you hate it, you know, that's fine. You don't have to use it, you know? <laughs> I have another one over here. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, 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 it's just it, it keeps me, it keeps me energized, and, and I like having the opportunity to be in on the creative side of things because you do, you know, when you're surrounded by it, you see a lot of things, and you don't realize how much you've picked up. And when I started getting behind the scenes, I went, oh, I know a lot more than I realized I know, you know. So, and which is what the first the first director of photography I worked with um, on that Canadian show. I mean, he, I was really nervous because I'm like, "Ooh, you know, is he is he going to come in and be like, you know, you don't know what you're doing and stuff?" And he'd been like 18 years on, you mm-hmm. know, Star Trek, you know, sh- series and stuff like that, and all kinds of things. I'm like, and he was so sweet. He was like, um, he goes, "Oh, he said I've worked with so many." actors in their first time directing and walk you know help to walk them through that he goes you know he goes you know it all you've been you know just trust yourself you you already have all that training and stuff and I was like oh okay thank you you know and I mean and he he could have he could have done the whole thing without me <laughs> <laughs> it's a little disconcerting but you know there's no question so when the, you know but I would come in with like okay I'm looking for this and this and this mm-hmm. so I you know I did my homework and stuff and you know, and then he'd just go, okay, you know, what do you have in mind, and blah, blah, blah. And then he'd go, okay, well, how about this? And sometimes it was like, yeah, that's great, I like that. And sometimes he says, no, I really want this. And you go, okay. You know, so it was never, it was no ego, there was no battle, there was no, oh, I know best in your, you know, you know, your And you haven't had that thing of so. people seeing you as, well, you were a TV actress, and, and you were on, uh, you were on the Waltons, and you were a child actress. They they see you as an authority they respect what you are doing as a director you're not having these battles as much no i mean i i think because it's, i'm really I do, i'm impressed i think it's because yeah. your attitude i mean you you obviously are the way you present yourself you are serious and intelligent and you make things very matter of fact as you said you sort of let the actors go and then i think that may have something mm. to do with it but it's just something about you it's 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 very impressive thank uh, you that you've just overcome all the stereotypes and all of the well crap that people put on people <laughs> in Hollywood and say, no, you can't do that. You're just kind of doing it. Well, I mean, it was interesting because I, when I, the way be, the theater company wasn't like, it was very loose. It was an interactive dinner theater. And so there was interactive a Interactive dinner theater. Yeah. Okay, I did dinner theater. I've not done interactive dinner theater. Yeah. Well, the, all the, all the waiting, the staff, mm-hmm. like initially when I worked there, the actors were also the waiters. Oh, dear. And so they would, they would, from the time the doors opened, the entire environment was immersed in whatever it was. Is that like a Tony and Tina's wedding type thing? Yeah, kind of, kind of you know. It's sort of like, so they'd mm-hmm. greet you at the door, mm-hmm. and if it was, you know, if we were at the beach, you know, we had art, our art director, set designer. They were also painters, graphic artists and stuff, and they would literally, like, certain walls in the theater would be repainted for every show to change the atmosphere. 
So, um, so the you know the actors, and then there were additional you know actor waiters, you know, so to to have enough people to because we had small cast. So, you know, they'd read, meet them at the door, and they were in character. Everybody was in character from the time the doors opened, and so the interaction at the table was in character. And then you know they'd go. Now the theater. Um, the actors don't do the service anymore, but they have, they, it's still interactive. But, you know, they get people up, up you know, they, we always had certain thing, bits where we'd get somebody from the audience up on stage for a certain segment or, you know, the, the, the cast would go through the house at times. We had lighting in different spots of the theater so that they could go out and play scenes, you know, literally in the house. So it was all, you know. So with that, I mean, we crafted it. So I didn't always come in with a plan. So I learned to direct without having to have all the answers so I could just walk into a place and go, okay, this is what we're working on. Okay, good. Let's do well, this. That's pretty crazy improvisational. That's like, cause, you know, yeah. I, I do shows in France and any ideas I have about how a show is supposed to go, what we're going to do, I kind of have to go, <laughs> no, because yeah. we're doing this and we're dragging people up off the, out of yeah. the audience and you don't really know where you're going with it. Yeah. So I just learned to trust that I'd come up with something, you know, so I can, I'm not afraid to walk into a space I haven't seen and go, I'll figure it out when I get there. I yeah. get the feeling you're not particularly afraid of anything. <laughs> well, let's go with a yes on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what are you doing next? Plug, plug, plug. What are you doing next? What's happening next? What are we plugging? Well, we're still working on um, Nowhere to Hide inclusion uh -huh. criteria, getting that out Good there. Criteria. So um, Don't watch it alone. I'm yes. just, no, really, it's scary. Yes, and at the end of the month, um, I will be at, um, I can't remember the venue, but you can check on my website because I'll put it up there. JudyNorton.com. Um, I'm guesting with Swing Dames, which is Swing um, Dames. The Swing Dames, yeah. They're like uh, Andrew Sisters uh, kind of big band, and I'm going to be um, guesting, singing a few songs with them mm. on the 28th of July at a 28th. lovely car museum down south someplace along the coast that I can't remember the name of. Cars, Swing Tunes, Judy. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I'm doing that, and then writing, you know, um, working on a on, working on a, this is a long long scale project. It's kind of a marathon, a, a musical um, with Greg Luganus about his Whoa. life and you know and career and stuff like that. So that's been in the works for about three years now. I'm writing the book for that, and Patrick Allen Casey's writing the lyrics and music, and you know, and Greg's one of the producers on it. And so that's been you know we're uh, we had one version of it last year that we did a you know like a backers audition of. Got a bunch of notes, and I went you know what I'm on a totally wrong track. I'm starting over. So you know the last year has been about like revamping and you know so. Just so gosh, finding the you're new direction. Not busy so. at all. Nothing. Nothing at all. No, no, no. no, no. no. Yeah. Just sitting around. The, yeah. yeah. Okay. I I think she's amazing. I think you think she's amazing. So it's <laughs> JudyNorton.com. It is. And you can you can find out everything she's doing because she's literally doing everything. And you can buy the albums. You can buy the music. You yeah. can buy the movie. You can buy yeah. everything. And I'm on social media. You look she's for everywhere. look for you know look for Mary Ellen with a little straw hat on <laughs> Facebook. That's me. I'm on Twitter. And come, come hear Norton. her sing. Come hear her sing sometime. Yeah. She is amazing. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Pleasure. And this is the Allison Arngram Show, and I'm Allison Arngram. And now we're going to play Catahoula. Yay!